Hello friends, welcome to this tutorial on Hyperledger Cactus. As you may aware that the blockchain technology adoption into the business processes is keep on increasing day by day. The number of blockchain projects are on the rise in part because developers are thinking outside the box as they try to leverage the technology's capabilities. Another reason for increasing the number of blockchain projects is the knowledge that no perfect solution will be able to address all blockchain needs at once. So interconnecting these new chains is becoming, becoming a necessity as more organizations start considering the emerging technology and its capabilities. Now let us get into the details of Hyperledger Cactus. Here in this diagram N1, N2, N3 so on represents the blockchains. So these are all different blockchains and the, there is no connectivity between these blockchains. These are all disparate blockchains running in different organizations. This can be built in any, any technologies. Currently Cactus supports these many blockchains for integration. Besu, Corda, Fabric, Ethereum, Iroha, Quorum, Sawtooth. So these are all the blockchain framework or technologies currently Cactus can be used for interoperability. And V1, V2, V3, these are all validators corresponding to the nodes in the blockchain. We will go in details about the validator, what is validators and all. So for the time being, just understand that uh, these validators are connected and are running a consensus algorithm to agree on the state of the underlying blockchain. Like in every blockchain, we are using a consensus algorithm to achieve the necessary agreement on a single data or a single state of the network among distributed processes. Here between the validators, it is running a consen consensus algorithm to agree on the state of the underlying blockchain. The validator nodes are ledger specific plugins. Hence a smart contract on the connected blockchain can enable the ledger specific functionalities necessary for a validator node to observe the ledger state to finalize a proof. The verifier nodes can request and register the public keys of the validator nodes of a blockchain they want to connect so that they can verify the signed proof of the state of the blockchain using public keys. The verifier will be connecting to the ledger through validator using the validator public key. Let us consider the scenarios where we are looking for blockchain interoperability. The different types of blockchain interoperability are the first one is ledger transfer where an asset gets transferred from one blockchain to another so that there are never two representations of the same asset alive at any time. Second way is atomic swap. Here a write transaction is performed on blockchain A concurrently with another write transaction on blockchain B. The two blockchain environments are isolated but due to blockchain interoperability of implementation both transactions are committed atomically. So it is uh, like a writing into two blockchains simultaneously as a transaction. Third one is ledger interaction. Here an action happening on blockchain is causing an action on blockchain B. The state of blockchain A causes state changes on blockchain B. There can be one way or two way ledger transactions. So it can be state changes due to blockchain changes in state changes in blockchain B as well as the other way around also. Fourth one is a ledger entry point coordination. This blockchain interoperability type concerns end user wallet authentication or authorization enabling read and write operations to independent ledgers from one single po entry point. Any read write transaction submitted by client is forwarded to the corresponding blockchain and then committed or executed as if the blockchain would operate its own. This is uh, you can imagine like a single sign on where you can access multiple applications using the same credentials. Now let us see the Hyperledger Cactus architecture. Here the main components are Cactus node server where the server accept a request from end user application and a return a response depending on the status of the targeted trade then end user application it will submit api calls to request a trade which invoke a set of transactions on the ledger by the business logic plugin 
then uh, the request is uh, going to the business logic plugin based on the type of request cactus server will create an instance of a specific business logic plugin and then there is a verifier factory to create the verifier object the verifier factory will be using the validator key to create a verifier so this is uh, not a validator registry this should be a uh, verifier registry the information about the active verifier the the verifier factory will be using this information to instantiate a verifier required to access required to connect to the validator and uh, the verifier then validator here it is showing two blockchains are connected we can have any number of blockchains connected to the verifier and uh, the transaction orchestration happens in the cactus node server and we are going to see that uh, where which all classes used for the transaction orchestration and how it is uh, performing uh, for our demo i'm just uh, showing you only one blockchain hyperledger fabric blockchain connected to the verifier just a single blockchain will be there we are we are connecting and uh, showing the demo from a use end user application will invoke an api from the cactus node server and that will be in turn call the validator and save data into the ledger so that's we what we are going to see in this uh, in this uh, tutorial now let us quickly go through the actual classes and its implementations here from the client application the request will go to the routing interface that is implemented in app.es file and there are two types so one is static router configuration is there and uh, uh, another is a dynamic routing so in dynamic routing it is using user setting dot yaml file from the from this yaml file it will get the router file which, which file it has to use for routing and from there it will it will create a business logic plugin and for that from the route file it will it will use the business management class and from there business management class will use that blp config object to decide on which business logic plugin class needs to be instantiated so here i have implemented two business logic plugin classes one search patient and second is add patient so uh, this file name is bl search patient and uh, this second one is bl add patient after that it will create a verifier and a validator and the using the verifier factory it will create a verifier there is a transaction fabric class so that will create a signed proposal that will be used by the verifier to connect to the validator from the verifier here it will call the api the the validator is exposed as a web socket api there are mainly two classes being used in the validator to connect to the ledger and perform the transactions or fetch data from the ledger using the chain code one is server monitor plugin and second is server plugin server monitor plugin is used to start or start or stop them stop monitoring the ledger and the server plugin is used to connect to the ledger and uh, perform the transactions or fetch data from the blockchain using the chain codes we will see these uh, operations happening when i do the code walk through thank you for watching this video i will have a code walk through in the next session thank you